Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, are you ready? Listen, we are sharing nothing else with you but the words of life. <laughs> and we share these things by the Spirit of God. And I'm trusting the Spirit of God that He will open your heart and truly bring you to the place of knowledge. Because with knowledge, you shall be delivered. Yeah, that's what the scripture says. That's what the scripture says. So before going to the broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Because we're doing this because we believe the testimony of Jesus who told us we should ask, give us this day our daily bread. So if you're ready and you believe like I do, come on, let's stand in agreement as we declare and say, Father, Today, I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. I was telling you something yesterday about Jesus. Because see, you, we can't talk about the testimony of Jesus without talking about him. Now listen, I told you something yesterday. I said when Jesus was born by Mary, that wasn't the first time the Word of God was being made flesh. It wasn't. It wasn't. And hey, 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 guess what? Oh, okay, hold on. <laughs> I'll get to that shortly. Praise God. Let me not jump the God. I'll get to that shortly. Now, so when Mary gave birth to him, he spent about 33 years or 33 and a half years from when he was born till when he died. Now, that was the longest the Word of God was not just made flesh, but He dwelt. He dwelt with us. That's what John was talking about. So when the, and the Word of God was made flesh and dwelt among us. And then we beheld His glory. But understand that he existed before he was made flesh. Not only did he exist before he was made flesh, he had severally been made flesh before then. So he showed up as Melchizedek. He met Abraham and dealt with him and left. He showed up, he met I mean, Abraham and Sarah this time, ate with them, blessed them, and left. Several instances in scripture, you see him show. But the first time he actually stayed was the one that we now read about, and we call him Jesus. But you see the truth about this. When he was born and dwelt among us, you know the story. He finished his work. And what work did he really come to do? He actually came to die. He came to die. Why did he come to die? I want to let you know something. He already carries a priesthood on him. I'm talking about the word. The word also carries a priesthood on him. And that priesthood, it was to bless us and bring us to a place where we function like him. But you see, and the number one assignment of that priesthood was to give life to man. Because because of him, man was created. And he couldn't carry out that function. Of course, you know the reason, because of Adam and what Eve did. So, he tried severally. He shows up, he blesses, he teaches, he pronounces the blessing. But then, for him to come to that place where he can actually freely give man this thing that is his ministry, which was to give man life, as God ordained from when man was created. 
He now came and dwelt with us. And not just dwelt with, dwelt with us, he actually died. by he, he paid the price with his own life for the redemption of man. Because he couldn't give man life because man was a prisoner to the spirit of death. See that now? So he had to pay that price for man. And that's what he was born for. That was he, he did when he dwelt with us. Now, after he died on that cross, when he declared it is finished, brothers and sisters, it was really finished. What do you mean it was finished? You see this dwelling that he was dwelling with us, it was finished. And so he gave up the ghost on that cross. The moment he gave up the ghost on that cross. Here is what was fulfilled from then on. John chapter 17 and verse, um, verse, let me read from verse one. And Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you as you have given him authority over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life that they might know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Now look at verse four. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work of which you gave me to do. He was referring to the work of dwelling among us. And, and that also means dying. That's what he said. But you see, there is another work that he wasn't talking about here. You see this now. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the world was. He was speaking of a glory he had right from before the world existed. Why? Because it was, it was in that glory that the world was created, the world was formed. Praise God. Now, he, here is Jesus, having dwelt among us and finished the work that God gave him to do on earth. That's what he was referring to, the work on earth. And now he's saying, Lord, I'm done. Okay. Now, that's why some theologians believe that this prayer was, uh, was a prayer Jesus prayed after the resurrection. So, some people believe that. And uh, there are reasons if you... If you study carefully the words, you, you will see a man who's speaking like, okay, like I'm really done, I'm done. There's nothing to do here again. But then there's also a reason to believe that he was speaking these words prophetically because he was yielded and it was now time to go to the cross. Anyway, let's leave that for another time. Uh, but get this right. When he was, the glory he was referring to here was he was saying, Father, Take me back to who I was from the beginning. Did the father answer that? Yes, the father did. Because you know what? The moment, now you know the disciples were waiting because he told them after three days, I will rise again. Yes, praise God. They, they heard those words, whether they believed it or not, but then they kept watch. So on the third day, they began to get news that Jesus was, 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 was no longer in the grave. Jesus was risen. Several people were bearing testimony. That, oh, we've seen him. We've seen him. Ah, but guess what? He had no address again. Think about it. You see, before, before he died, they could say, oh, let's go to Jesus. Let's go and see Jesus. They could go to the house and they'll see Jesus. But the moment he died, after he died, they couldn't find him again. They didn't find him. Rather, he always found them. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah, he always found them. So, so you see, um, 
Mary Magdalene at the grave. He was, he was there and looking for Jesus. And, and she looked at this man and thought he was a gardener. I said, sorry, sir, where? Can you tell me where they took him to? Please, just tell me. And he says, Mary. And I'm like, ah, Rabboni, this is you. Wow, how come she never recognized him? He was walking with those disciples going to Elimas. And they were talking about him. He was talking to them. But they didn't know he was the one. Until they got to the house and he, he decided to break bread. I said, no, this is you. One time, no. You know, these were the things that got Thomas to be worried. Because Thomas is hearing different things. You know, I, I saw him at the tomb. I, I actually thought he was the gardener. I said, Mary, you don't know Jesus again. Just three days, you can't recognize him again. No, 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 you don't get. He, 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 he was different. So how do you know he was the one? I knew he, he, it was him. Oh, okay. And, and these two guys said, because you know, after Jesus departed from them, they ran back to the rest and said, Hey guys, we met Jesus. I said, Okay, so how did you meet him? And he told us, Come, on, what's wrong with you guys? You, you want to tell me that you will see Jesus so that you don't know him? Are you okay? No, they, they, he, he looked different. <laughs> what do you guys do? You describe him. And then they describe, Mary, can you describe the one you met? It's not the same person they were talking about. But it's the same person, Jesus. Like, so Thomas said, come, come, hold on, hold on. So you see, sometimes it's doubting Thomas, doubting Thomas. Oh, put yourself in his shoes, man. <laughs> you may have done worse. So, so Thomas said, hey guys, look, hold on. I'm tired of all these long stories. <laughs> he said he will rise, I believe. Oh. But you know what? All these things I don't understand. Until I see the holes in his hands and the wound on his side. Forget it, man. Don't come and tell me all these things. Now, Jesus wasn't there when Thomas was saying that statement. And nobody went to his house to tell him, can you imagine what Thomas is saying? He's saying, and saying but he heard them. He heard Thomas. So guess what? The next time the Bible said they were in, a, in the room together, the doors were shut and suddenly, Jesus, he didn't knock on the door. He didn't, hey, please open up, it's me. Open up. And then someone, no, 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 no. The Bible said the door being shut, he appeared in their midst. And he said, Thomas, come, look at the holes. Now, it's not every time he appeared that he had those holes. For Thomas' sake, he had to appear with the body that had those holes. See that? And you remember the disciples had gone fishing. And Jesus came to shore in the morning. And his children, do you have any meat? He said, no, we don't have meat. He says, okay, cast your net on the right side. And then they did. And, and, and the moment they, they began to see that miracle, John told Peter, Peter, it is the Lord. And Peter, <laughs> like, oh, wow, what? And guess what? The Bible says they went to meet him and nobody asked him, who are you? <laughs> now, th there's a reason John said that. Because now by this time, they, they just knew that he could appear in any form. Now, when I mean any form, no, he will not appear as a goat. He will not appear as a cow. That's not what I'm talking about. He appears as a man. But what do you think was going on there? The word of God made flesh. That was what was happening. So now he, he asks the father. He says, give me the glory that I had with you from the beginning. And the father answered him. The moment he died on that cross, he stepped into that glory that he had from the beginning. And what was that glory? It was simply the word. And whenever he wanted to show up, the word takes on flesh and shows up. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is so simple, but I know many people don't understand it. Why? Not because the Lord has made it difficult to understand, but because they have not sat down to meditate on the person of Jesus. He says, all what I'm telling you now is the testimony 
of Jesus. And when you open your heart to believe this, guess what happens? The spirit of prophecy comes upon you and it begins to give you insight and understanding about the person of Jesus. Our time is up. Praise God. I want to pray for you right now because this is very important. Can you close your eyes? Father, this is what I ask of you. Make Jesus known to everyone that is watching and listening to me right now. Reveal your to them. That they will know you for who you are. And that they will begin to take advantage of your testimony and manifest your person. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, God bless you. Bye.